Hello, children of Fortnite. This is Seaman at 3 a.m. And I've come to tell you that Freddy Fazbear's parents are products of incest. The mom and the dad are brother and sister. Thank you. I don't know, everything's coming together fast. Really? So it, yeah. I mean, we've had the songs for a while, but I mean, the whole idea for the music video came with Carlos. Okay. It was all on him, really. Interesting. It's been overdue, I guess. Yeah, that, yeah, that's true also. Interesting. So it's been overdue, but like once things started moving, it was like... It was pretty quick, yeah. Okay. Because we started like a couple weeks ago just putting the stuff up and then now we're here already. But it's, yeah, Brian's right, it's way overdue. Okay. Damn. I guess we never took the time to actually, like... Actually, myself, I actually never took the time to, like, sit down <clears throat> and, like, plan things out. We kind of just waited for things to happen. I actually, like, didn't participate too much in the making of the studio. Um, yeah, like... It took, it took some time to like the songs we had down, the idea of the music we had down. We we've had it stored for quite some time now. A lot, yeah. And um, the lyrics have been done, the mechanics of the music have been done. Everything has been done. Uh, uh, you know, AJ also he helped us out a lot in the making, the mixing, and the recording stuff. So everything has just been slowly moving forward and now we're just ready to record uh, the first video and I'm we'll see how it goes. And there's more to come now. too, more videos. Like the big footstep for us to, to like go out there and hopefully play shows soon. What, what, what is your dream venue? Dude, playing at the Whiskey would be sick. Uh, at the whiskey. At the whiskey. This like it's a club in Hollywood on Sunset Boulevard, like super legendary club. Yeah. Like that's where like Metallica, Van Halen, all the big bands started at. Okay. So to play there would be so fucking cool. And you've been there too? Yeah, we've been there. Okay. We uh we we've, we've seen a couple of uh, different uh artists uh play there, and uh, it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty uh it's small. It's, uh you know pri private if small. you will. Small. It's only like a three five hundred capacity club. Okay. Yeah, so it's pretty. It's 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 pretty. Uh, it's a pretty good place. Uh, you, like like Hector says, it's legendary. It's been there for legendary. years and years. A lot of people have played there. A lot of people have uh, started actually there. And and in terms of genre, do you guys fit right in, or would you guys be like pushing the envelope a little bit if you guys were to play there? The thing about us, to be honest, the stuff that we're playing and putting out I don't hear much of it and to be honest it sounds like it's, it could be a new genre on its own really that's, yeah that's it's, it's, it funny. sounds like nothing I've heard before okay in turn it, it could be like song structure or like certain riffs and all that but some of the stuff that we're putting out there it's, I hope to bring a new audience to like this genre of rock music that we're putting out yeah because it's crazy it's it's like some like something I've never like heard before okay so I hope that brings like bigger crowds and stuff hopefully more people get into it yeah in a lyrical content standpoint the lyrics are all carlos but from what i've read a, a lot of people could understand like the stuff that he's come up with people can learn from it there are some songs that relate to real real world problems that after many years still haven't been fixed okay. and it's something that like for example there's a song called short wire which talks about school shootings and how those shooters are a bunch of assholes and no lives uh -huh. and that's something that people need to hear because it's something that's hasn't changed yeah it's all been the same and after many years nothing's happened okay. and how can something like that happen like uh -huh. mm, so it doesn't make sense in in the end there, there always will be a message to it uh -huh. with this song also i mean yeah we did meme a lot on the walls and yeah. stuff with like photos of us and like uh -huh. just people that we knew and stuff but in the end there's always a message to it there's already something that people can learn from not only from us but from the music itself 
Yeah, I, I've, I've um, personally I've heard the single already, like the the raw the rawest version of it, um, and it's pretty exciting, you know. Um, the ramblings in my head, you know, it does poke fun of like how insane these conspiracies can get, but yeah, like you know, I think it's it's really important that like people can talk about stuff but still understand like even if the world's burning you can take it easy too you know what I mean mm -hmm. so I love playing this kind of music that, yeah. that we play yeah, I love playing with these guys a lot it's so much fun <clears throat> it's pretty much how it all came together this was actually our first song like our first kind of serious song because before that we were writing songs for the uh, the YouTube channel that Carlos had uh -huh. and that, those were just like kind of like meme songs uh -huh. and then one day we were like fuck it let's write something something original something real okay. and this this is actually the perfect first single to put out that's a wrap you know? i said i bleed for rock and roll and i think i just started my period <laughs> okay. Top yeah. the style that we play the way that we sing and, and, and everything that has uh, that goes on you can you can definitely tell where we picked that up okay. which artist is uh, you'll know once you hear it you'll know yeah, that's a perfect way to put it. I mean, when you hear these songs, you, you'll definitely... As, as we had more songs coming, like, when we were writing songs, that's when we sort of, like, started finding our own styles of playing, but yet, at the same time, influenced by, like, these bigger names. And you can totally tell. Like, like Carlos is, like, I guess the main riff writer, and you can definitely tell, like, when he explains it, like, his influence, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I can hear that on this song or on this song, or, like... If I have a guitar solo that like, oh yeah, I was influenced by this player, this player, you can, you'll definitely hear it. But I think it's all original, all original stuff from us. Even like the way he plays, also, it's you'll definitely tell. There's another song that we did, or another single. Was it a single? Which one? The, the entertainment one. What was it called? The the theme song or which yeah, one? Yeah, that's what it's called. oh the, the very theme first song. one. Yeah, <laughs> the so theme we, song. We made a theme song, and then that was like. It was like 30, 40 seconds. It was like actually it took us like a while to come up with. It was just, really? Yeah, it was. We came up with it, but for some reason we just didn't like it, so we kept like trying to change it. And then eventually we just like okay, just leave it like that. So that was our first thing working together. All three of us, Carlos and I, have actually, have actually been playing for mm -hmm. quite some time. I started playing drums. Uh, at the same time, Carlos started playing guitar, and then that's kind of how we how we learned uh, together. Yeah. Um, where? We we actually played together. He played, um, I think, his parents bought him a guitar and he started uh, playing, I think so. And then I, I started playing at church. I actually had a, 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 a youth leader. His name was Jose. He actually taught me how to play. Okay. And uh, Carlos and I actually used to like go after, I think it was high school, like freshman year of high school. We used to go after school to church and like, just sneak in there and like play. Just trying to uh, play simple, you know, music mm -hmm. that we would come up with, and then later on we transitioned into trying to play songs from Smashing Pumpkins from their album 1999. I think it's called 1999. Okay. And then we played a few songs from there, and that's actually the first songs that Carlos and I played. And that's where he started singing and playing, and that's where I started playing and also like singing backing vocals for him and stuff and uh, that was a like freshman year and I think after high school is when Hector joined us okay. been just pushing through like you know during high school it was kind of hard you know obviously we had to go to school then we had to uh, uh, soccer you know like yeah we had soccer and then and then like whatever we had to do after school you know like school work and whatever we had to do and so we really had to like search for time to actually go in there and practice and we would practice on our own and it just kind of it, it was it was difficult during uh, high school after high school it was actually a little bit easier but um that's kind of how this came too and you guys are telling me that this is music that you've never really heard before and that you're excited to make it because it's so original and though you can hear all your influences um it, it, it remains its own beast. And that's something that really excites me. And to hear you guys have such a deep history, I feel like surely there's a lot of chemistry between you guys. Look my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not nice at that spot. Watch this. That's an 
<laughs> oh shit, we <laughs> over <laughs> Um, I think it is easy. I think it's easy um, because the guitar I started on was $60 on sale for like Black Friday, which is coming up right now. So it was only 60 bucks to get an acoustic guitar and that's where I created like every single riff, any riff that I've ever thought of or tried to, you know, come up with was made on that $60 acoustic guitar. And for the others? So, um, for the other, for the other guitar, uh, I think it was donated. My other guitar was donated through... For the whole band itself too? Though. Oh, for the band? For the band themselves? Yeah. I think this is probably like a hundred bucks or something or 60 or something. But uh, the, for the other band members too, um, uh, they, I don't know, okay, I can't really speak on their, on their beginning, but that's how I started. I started with only the $60 guitar, a rogue guitar, a rogue acoustic guitar. And then I just learned the chords there, learned all the basics and stuff, and then from there, what do you call it? It's just up to you at that point. It's like, what do you want to do? Do you want to play covers or do you want to make your own stuff? And from even from the beginning, like even when I wasn't that good at the guitar, like I was always making like little things that I thought sounded cool. So, oh, yeah. So you got the other uh, buddies to team up with you and they were doing the same thing? Oh, yeah, you're talking about that whole thing. So yeah, back in 2015, like just out of high school, I was, for some reason, I don't know, I, I guess I thought my group of friends was like cool and like um, that we had a lot of interesting things to say. So originally my thought was to make a podcast and most good podcasts have a little theme song or they have a little thing before they go into it. And what we ended up doing was I knew Hector from high school and I knew he played guitar, he played electric guitar and I was like, we need to get a cool like guitar riff. So me and my friend, uh, Greece, we wrote uh, a theme song to what was essentially um, the beginning of TCIE. And um, so me and Hector got in the studio back at his old house, another garage, and we, uh, we put out the, we, we collaborated on the song and we worked on it and it worked out. It was pretty cool, but um, Little did we know that that would be like the inception of, of everything. We did make the podcast, we didn't end up doing that. We scrapped the uh, podcast idea, we just kept making uh, songs with each other and videos uh, together as a collective for a certain YouTube channel that shall not be named. <laughs> the way we do things here, uh, or the way we've been doing it for, I don't know, however long, uh, I actually just show up and and get yeah. behind the kit and then they play and then I just follow along and uh, all the songs are kind of like that. Well, not all of them, but most of them. And then whenever something needs to be changed, I just tell them, like, change this, put it here. So they really lay down uh, the, the riffs, the, uh, the lyrics and everything that needs to go. And I just come in and like, arrange everything. And uh, I tell them where everything needs to go and, and, and that's how songs are done. And you know, it's it's it's, it's pretty actually. It's pretty uh, an interesting process. It's it. I mean, Carlos does a lot of the a lot of the work. May, maybe like 60, 70 percent of the work, eighty maybe. But usually, like it's just a mess. Like, it's done correctly. It's just a mess. And then I come in, arrange it. Hector comes in too, arranges it, puts in uh, solos in there. Riffs actually, in really there. good at arranging. A, a perfect example would be Southern Cult. The first demo of Southern Cold we had was horrible. Certain riffs were like not in the right position and stuff, and like it, it was just a mess. And then we showed him the song, and he's like, "No, put start with this riff, start with this one, and then keep going. Play this one eight times, keep going." Yeah. He made that song like ten times better. That's one of my favorite songs to play, just because just because the way he arranged hey, it. Can we hear the name of it again? What's it was called? Southern Cold. Southern Cold. Okay. I'm looking forward to that, I really am. Can you zoom in on my face? Can you see how fucking psyched I am for Southern Cult? Oh! No, I'm just so crazy. Uh, when you listen to the songs, you just have to have an open mind and, and try to, you know, get inside our heads and see what we were doing, you know, because it's it, it's the way we wrote it and it's gonna stay like that, you know? Yeah. But it's, 
Some of them are a little bit easier to hear than others because it's three of us and we all have different uh, personalities, different way we do things and so, and we have to compromise. That's just the bottom line. Sometimes we have to compromise. Like I said, like, like I just said, you know, like I would remove some of the bridges because I would think, I think they would, they would sound better. However, it's three of us. So two of them voted that it was gonna stay, so it stayed, yeah. right? And I'm totally okay with it. I play with it, I enjoy it and all that. And um, and then you guys have to have to decide if you like yeah. it or not. And we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm pretty excited for it, but I know after it, like once we see everything finished and all that, yeah. once we put it out to the world, that's when we'll be like, okay, it, it now sounds, it's time. It sounds like you guys are actually pretty hungry, like you guys are ready to play, you guys are just discussing about how like live shows are going to go, like bridges, no bridges, and you're talking about like, it sounds it sounds like you guys are ready for a lot more. Yeah, and, definitely. And you guys are pumping out more content, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, there's going to be way more to come, not, not just in our music, but live shows, stuff that we'll be doing we're planning a bunch of stuff to do this year hopefully sick. soon we'll start playing shows okay. and that's it really and we'll see what happens we'll see where it takes us and uh but yeah we, we've definitely talked about playing live the places we've actually gone and, and done a lot of uh research on where we can play we've checked out a lot of venues we we went to a lot of places just to to see how they are we talked to a lot of people and and all of that and you know here we've actually we have a i think it's three or four set lists that we have for like playing yeah we have like three or three four, or four. Oh, okay yeah and uh we, you know like and it's not just writing a song after a, after a song after a song it's it's actually like having different uh uh things that we're gonna do and you know like we're gonna pause here we're gonna we're gonna have a little discussion here and like transition from here to here so it's really well established and I guess we're just waiting for things to pop up. <laughs> well, I'm excited for them to pop up. Are you guys ready to go in the room? See what the fuck is popping in there, bitch? Let's go.